we have our user service now, and this is great because we have a clear separation of concerns for our different files. We have our user list component, which is specifically made to show a user list. And on top of that, we have a user service, which is specifically meant to contact the GitHub API. This is how we're going to structure a lot of our Angular projects. Services are solely meant to connect to an external API. And components are used to grab those services, use those services, and then display the data in the templates. With that in mind, let's start using this new user service we have. We're going to say private user service. And this is just what I'm going to name this user service. And then we're going to inject the user service. And that's studly caps. And notice it automatically did the import for us. User service from dot dot slash dot dot. So it went up two folders to grab the user service. Now that we have this here on init, so when this component gets initialized, Remember, we don't want to do this work inside of the constructor. The constructor is only meant to set up and inject what this component needs. On init, we're going to say this.userService. Dot, and notice TypeScript and Angular allows us to see what's inside of this user service. Very useful. We'll get users. Dot, and then since we're returning an observable, we can subscribe to it. Data. And then let's console.log the data and see what's going on. We'll inspect element, go into the console, and now we have an array of 20 users, which that should be 10. Let's refresh, see what's going on here. 20 users, we'll go back into our user service per page 20. Oh, I changed it, and we didn't change it back to the 10. So we'll change it back to 10. Immediately our app restarts, makes that API call, and gets 10 users. All right, so our user service is doing its job perfectly. We have injected the user service into our component, and now we're using it on initialization for ng on init. Now, normally, you would say, OK, this is actually not data. That's users. I don't just want to be clear about what we're naming things. And you would bind this users to a property on this class. And that way, we can show it in our template. So we're going to tell our Angular class, hey, you have a users array. It doesn't even know it's an array. We just have a property called users. And then down here, we will say this.users is equal to users. That comes back from the API. All right, save that. And now let's take a look and make sure that our users are showing up. So we have this users variable here. We've bound the data coming back from the HTTP call. Let's say users. And since it is an array, Let's try JSON, see if that works. OK, so it shows the entire array of objects, which is going to be 10 objects. And now we can see those in our template. This isn't going to be really helpful, so we have to actually loop over these users. So we're going to use what's called a structural directive, div star ng if, and if users. So we're only going to show this section if we have users. And we don't even need these p tags anymore. If we have users, we're going to loop over them with ng4. So we're going to say div star ng4. And if this is a little weird to you, this is because we're using the ES6 kind of syntax, where we say let something of something if we're trying to use an iterable, which in this case is an array, let user of users. And that's the ES6 syntax of four of a four of loop. And that's what the Angular team decided on, and that's totally fine. So we're going to say let user of users, user.login, which is what the username is supposed to be right here. So we'll save that, and now we should get a list of, there we go, all of our usernames. Now, this is really cool since this is returning an observable from the user service, get users, and we're subscribing to it. Something to note, though, is that when this gets destroyed, we should probably unsubscribe to this observable. And that keeps our data very clean. That keeps our application lean and mean. Now, that's something you don't really want to deal with. So the Angular team allows us to do something very simple. We're going to say this.users is equal to user service.get users. And then up here, 
instead of let user of users, there's a pipe we can use called async. And that will unwrap this observable for us and destroy it when this component is destroyed. So we don't have to worry about the life cycle of this observable. And also our code looks a lot cleaner coming out of our ng on init. All right, this is fine and all, but let's give this a little bit more styling. We're gonna say section, class is section. Okay, and then let's close that. I'll put a container inside of this, div class container. And the cool thing about Bulma is it comes with a grid system and the grid system is working like this. You have div class columns. And then inside of this, you have div class column. And then each column will take up a certain section of this grid. We have ng if is on the column. So we only want to show the columns if we have users. And then we have ng4. Let's put that on the column itself so we can loop over the users. And each one has its own part of the grid. I believe we can delete all of that there. There we go. So now they all show up in a line and they're all part of the grid. Now let's say we only wanted to show four on each line. We would say columns is multi-line. And this is just some Bulma classes for their grid. Column is four and that's out of 12. So if we do is four, there will take up about three for each row. Yep, one, two, three. And I wanna use a little bit more of the Bulma classes. We'll say div class card. And remember, you don't have to do any of this. You could totally just skip this entire part. If this is a little too much of the HTML template part for you, card content. And this is just from browsing the Bulma doc so long that I remember all of these cards, card content, and that looks good. Now we have seen pretty much the workflow of how you will be building Angular applications, getting data from an HTTP service, an API, and then showing that inside of your template, right? We have defined the things that we need. And if you wanted to, you could even use TypeScript to say, okay, this is gonna be array of probably user, which you'll create a user model, which we don't have, but that'll be an array. This dot users, we bind it to the HTTP call coming out of our user service. We've injected it here. And then now we are able to loop over NGF users, let user of users, and that async pipe is important to unwrap that observable. So this is kind of the flow of an Angular application, get data, show data. I wanna take a step back now and let's talk about the foundations of Angular. And I'll, we'll just have, instead of slides, we're gonna do this right in our editor. So the way that Angular works is it has a couple different concepts around it. And the first one is going to be modules. Now modules are gonna be the way that we can organize parts of our Angular applications into sections. And if we open up app module and zoom out, since that is giant, let's zoom out a little, okay. Now what happens here is we have our imports, our ES6 imports, and you'll see a lot of ES6 imports in Angular. You'll see it a lot in React. That's just the way that the JavaScript world is moving. And I really like the import statements because instead of just trying to grab things globally, like if you're using jQuery, you just use dollar sign and maybe you didn't load the jQuery library yet, dollar sign wouldn't work. But here we'll know exactly what we're using. Now declarations, we're using app component. Imports are the modules we're importing. Providers are services and Bootstrap is what's going to start our application. So I know that sounds like a lot, but really an ng module, and this is what's called a decorator, and a decorator is a way we can add extra metadata to this class. So instead of configuring all this stuff inside the class, we can say declarations here, we're just adding a decorator here, so this kind of tells this class what it's going to be using. So we have our main app module, and this is where we're going to register everything for this main part of our application. Now, the cool thing is, is you noticed that when we did our demo, the user section was lazy loaded. We told the user section, hey, load this users module, which we'll create in a later lesson. And that's how lazy loading works. These modules help Angular to know what sections are what in our application. So if we want to use something, just remember to register it in a module, and then our Angular will know that it exists and know how to use it. Let's step forward into our component and 
here is our component template right here. And actually, let's show this off. We're going to open up our, well, let's exit out of this. And I want to use the built-in VS Code terminal. Now, my Angular site, the way that we run an Angular application, if you're using the Angular CLI, is ng serve. Now, the Angular CLI went and served our application. It built out five files, inline, main, polyfill, styles, and vendor. And then we can go over to our Chrome localhost 4200 is where our Angular app gets started. And here is our main app component. You can see welcome to app. Let's split this out to the right. We'll split this out to the left. Close that. Close this. And the cool thing about the Angular CLI, as soon as we save any files, it will automatically update the browser. So this is our full template. And this is a lot of stuff here. We're not even going to need this. Let's delete all of this. And the router outlet is needed. That's where our routes are going to get output to. And we're going to say, hello, I am an Angular application. And for fun, let's do an emoji for fire. Save, and then watch the right side immediately get updated. So Angular CLI handles all of this for us. It's using Webpack under the web. It's using Webpack dev server to do all of this hot reloading and fun stuff. So that's what the Angular CLI does for us, right? We start up our application with one line, and then we serve it with one line, and then we can just start working, and it automatically updates. But this is going to be the foundation for an Angular component. We have our component decorator, and then we have our component class and our template. And we'll see how we can build out more components really soon, but components are a really good way to build up our application into modularized parts. And then we'll look at our app routing module, const routes. This is where we're going to be writing out our routes. And the cool thing about TypeScript, if you're not sold on TypeScript, and I wasn't at first, but now I'm a really big fan of TypeScript. Where did that come from? TypeScript, by typing things, it helps you to find errors quickly. And also it self-documents your code. So you know that these this routes, and you could totally do it without the typings, right? Well, you can say just const routes is equal to, uh, I don't know, let's write in some random path is going to be blank and the component we're going to use. And here, let's talk about component name. We'll say home component. And that'll be something we build, right? But if we don't know what's going on in this routes, okay, path, component name, this probably won't work because it won't work. We would have to go into the Angular documentation, find the routes documentation, and figure out exactly what to call this route, how we would create this route. But since we had routes here, and we'll click Save, Angular and TypeScript can tell us that we're already making errors. So if I hover over this, it'll say component name is not assignable to a route. Oh, OK. Well, let's try a component. OK, so we'll delete that. Component is now normal. No errors there. If we go to home component, cannot find name home component. So this TypeScript is really, really good at finding errors for us before we actually go to our browser and have to inspect element over there. So if we do this and I start typing, let's delete that. If I start typing in component, Angular and TypeScript already know, hey, do you want to use component? So this is what we call self-documenting, and the typings from TypeScript help us build faster. So we'll say, OK, I want component, home component, and we haven't defined that yet, but that's kind of the idea behind TypeScript, is by using types and saying, oh, this is going to be of type routes, this array, it helps us to build faster because our documentation is right in our editor. So that's the routing module. And then notice we have the router module. We're exporting the routing module. And if we go back to, I don't, do I need to save that? Yeah, I do need to save that. So let's save this, close that, close a couple more things. And let's go back into app module. Notice that our app routing module is here. 
So this ng module, this main app module is where we register everything and we'll see that soon. So this is kind of the foundation of an Angular application. You have modules, you have components, and all of those get put together to build out our app.